Gam zu letova. This too is for good. You may have heard this expression from our tradition before. In fact, our daughter learned it last year in school and uses it all the time. Never for herself, mind you, but only when her brother doesn't get his way. See, Leora uh, might see Ezra playing with a toy uh, that she wants, and she goes and takes it from him and gives him a different toy and will tell him, Gamzu tova, this too will be for good. This expression was first coined by Rabbi Nachum in the Talmud nearly 2,000 years ago. He was called Gamzu because, despite enduring calamity after calamity, he would always exclaim, Gamzu letova, this too is for good. The Jews remaining in Israel following the destruction of the temple sent Gamzu to deliver a gift, a chest filled with jewels and pearls to the Roman emperor. The downtrodden Jewish community simply wanted to persuade the empire to treat them in a fair and just manner. So Gamzu set off, and on his way, he spent the night at an inn. During the night, residents of that inn stole all of the jewels and pearls, replacing them with dirt. Upon discovering what had happened, he sighed, Gamzu Latova, this too will be for good. And when he presented this chest to the emperor, and the emperor saw the dirt, he cried, How dare the Jews mock me? And he was ready to put the entire Jewish community to death. Of course, Nahum again responded, Gamzu Latova, this too is for good. Hold on a second. This too is for good? I remain struck by the unbridled optimism here that even upon the proposed destruction of our people, Gamzu would remain steadfast in his belief that all would work out for the best? Well, in fact, the Talmud tells us that in this very moment, Elijah the prophet appeared before the emperor in the guise of one of his servants, declaring, perhaps this is no ordinary dirt. Legend holds that the dirt of Abraham, their forefather, fed fast in his belief would, that all would work out for the best? Well, <laughs> in fact, the Talmud tells us that in this very moment, we'll hold a Elijah the prophet... <laughs> all right. <laughs> Legend holds that the dirt of their forefather, Abraham, would turn into swords and arrows, defeating their enemies. And indeed... When the Romans tested the dirt in battle, they were victorious, and the emperor saw the magical powers of this dirt. He apologized before Gamzu and refilled his chest with the most precious jewels and pearls, sending him off with great honor. Now, as students of our tradition, we want to glean wisdom from our ancient texts. Is the Talmud really teaching us that all we need to do in life is say, Gamzu letova, this too will be for good, and all will be right in the world? Can we simply will it into existence? We know from our own experiences in life that this simply isn't the case. And we read in the Torah this morning that good, that justice, are never guaranteed, imploring us in one of the most prominent verses from our tradition, Tzedek, Tzedek Tirdof, justice, justice shall you pursue. Tzedek, that which is good, that which is right, that which is just, is not given to us. We need to work hard to achieve it. So where was the hard work Gamzu put in to achieve this victory for the Jewish people? Perhaps it's not apparent on the surface, but if we peel back a layer, the hard work starts to come into focus. You see, this story hails from a time when the Jewish world had been turned upside down. The temple had been destroyed, Jerusalem in ruins, the remnants of our people seemingly reliant on the benevolence of the Roman Empire for their very survival. And so, perhaps the most challenging, most crucial work of our leaders at this moment in time was in convincing our community not to despair 
not to give up hope. The early rabbis, those who wrote this story in the Talmud, were engaged in this sacred yet arduous task. In spreading the tale of Gamzu, they helped instill in our ancestors, even under difficult circumstances, the feeling Gamzu Letova, the steadfast belief that everything would work out, that, to quote the lyrics of Peter, Paul, and Mary, justice would somehow prevail. For how can we be prepared to put in that hard work if we don't share the belief that good can prevail? How can we be inspired to pursue justice if we don't believe that we can make a difference? Our early rabbis understood this, working hard to spread that message to all those around them. And while the challenges we have faced change over time, believing and spreading the belief that we have the ability to make a difference, that's timeless. As much as ever, we yearn to know that Tzedek Tzedek Tirdof, pursuing justice, is not simply rhetoric, but truly something within our grasp. Take Theodore Herzl writing about his vision for the state of Israel. Im tirtzu einzo agada. If you will it, it is no dream. Take Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., who, during a sermon he was invited to give at a synagogue in Los Angeles, fam famously said, I believe that the moral arc of the universe is long, but it bends towards justice. Even Anne Frank, who, in the most dire of circumstances, wrote in her diary, how wonderful it is that nobody need wait a single moment before starting to improve the world. Undoubtedly, so much work still needs to be done in the effort to build a more just, good, perfect world. But these beliefs, these messages are a critical foundation, inspiration to go out and make an impact. Yesterday, we began the month of Elul, the final month of the Jewish year, a month where we call ourselves to attention with blasts from the shofar each morning to reflect on our words and our actions, to perform teshuvah, to better ourselves so that we can better our community, our world. The blasts remind us, as we read in Pirkei Avot, the ethics of our ancestors, Lo alecha hamlacha ligmor, velo ata ben chorin lehibatel mimena. While it's not incumbent upon us to finish the task, neither are we free to ignore it. We must engage in the task of tikkun olam, building a better world. The power of this final month in our year lies in the faith that we are both creatures and agents of transformation. We don't need to remain stuck. We each carry within us the capacity to change, to grow, to impact the world around us. And yet, in order to perform the work of teshuvah, of bettering ourselves for the coming year, in order for our shofar blasts to be effective, we need first to believe that transformation is possible. We need to be able to say to ourselves, to our community, to our world, even with all of our imperfections, even with all of the imperfections we see in the world, gamzu letova, this too is for good. Shabbat shalom.